Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles. Now, the guys over at MashDrop.com sent me yet another thing to review. Now, they know what I like. They really do. Because you know what they sent me? No, no, seriously, guess. You're, you're, you're never gonna guess. You're, you're not. Oh, wait a second. It's probably in the video title, isn't it? All right, whatever. It's a keyboard. <gasps> it's the most plain-looking keyboard box I've ever seen. But what's inside will amaze you. What do they say? Good things come in plain boxes? Or, or was, was it small boxes? I, we'll, we'll find out. All right guys, well here we have it, a code keyboard. It's actually really plain Jane looking, but let's go ahead and open it up. Can't judge something by its box. All right, so we opened up, got a little piece of paper here on top. It's a WASD keyboard. And uh, it says right here that it has dip switches on the back to adjust, enable, and disable functions. That's pretty cool. So it's got a list of all the different switch modes. Wow. So you can make it a standard uh, QWERTY keyboard, Mac mode, Dvorak mode, Colmac mode. Colmac mode. You can change the modes for the caps lock. You can enable the OS key, disable the OS key. Uh, wow, you can do all kinds of stuff. It even has function commands down here. Uh, function insert is play pause, function home. So it does actually have function keys. Oh, I see it does have a function button. Wow, that's that's something new I haven't seen on a keyboard before. All right, so popping it out of here. Looks like it doesn't have a cable on it. So you can see right here, the USB cable goes into the bottom. Um, so it has a detachable cable. I actually love that. I wish more keyboards actually had a detachable cable. And it's got some weight to it. This thing's beefcake. All right, let's see what we got hiding in the box down here. We have uh, this medical looking device. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure out what that does. Looks like we have a USB to PS2 adapter. I actually like those because I prefer to plug my, key, my keyboard into PS2. Um, I know you can get N-key rollover, USB, and everything, but the PS2 port is like the fastest method I know of of getting a keystroke to the computer. And we have our cable. Looks like it's a USB cable here. Let's pull it out. It's a really, really heavy duty. It's not braided or anything like that. It's just your standard run-of-the-mill rubber cable, but it is a lot thicker than most USB cables. And it's got the nice little thing on the end there though, so you can Velcro it together when you're transporting it. And that is it for what's in the box. Just as plain on the inside as on the outside. All right, so first impressions just looking at the keyboard here is it's got nice weight. I like that it has double pads here in the front so the keyboard will not slide around on your desk. This thing is way grippy um, compared to like the DOS keyboard. And you know, I slide this thing around, it, it it's not very grippy. This thing, that is grippy. I do like a keyboard that stays put. Now this keyboard has the Cherry MX clear switches on it, which is a switch that I haven't used before. And the first thing that I really noticed with it is one, it is a lot quieter than say like the blue switches. The blue switches are insanely loud. These are actually pretty quiet. So you can kind of see I'm typing on this one. Then if we go to a red switch, or sorry, a blue switch, you can definitely tell the sound difference. Another thing is, it is a very harsh key press. I mean, there is a lot of weight behind it. So this is a keyboard that you'd want to use if you like a very, very stiff depression on the key. All right, it's time to plug this bad boy in. And just for irony's sake, I'm actually going to plug it into the USB ports on my other keyboard. <laughs> now on the bottom here, you can actually run the USB cable through either side or down through the center. I prefer it down through the center. We'll just run it down there. But I like that it actually has the grooves in it uh, to go all the different ways. So depending on how your desk is laid out, that's actually really, really helpful. Now, one thing to note is this keyboard does not have any USB ports on it. So if you need USB ports, this probably isn't a good keyboard for you, but it does have the standups on the back that you can lift up and they're very, very heavy duty and rigid. So you can get that keyboard at that nice angle. I also like how the OS key doesn't have a windows logo on it. It's, it's, they pretty much just left it a blank key so that it can be, you know, the Mac command key or it can be a Windows key. I, I like that. That's a good idea for that keycap. We can see we're working. We have these little LEDs up here. I don't know if you guys can see them there in the video, but uh, you know, they blink on, they blink off. They're very, very small though. Usually keyboards have a really obnoxious caps lock um, LED in them. And this is very, very subtle. All right, so it said to adjust the brightness because this is a backlit keyboard. You're supposed to hold down function. You can use F12 and F11. 
All right, I already ran into a little bit of confusion with the keyboard, so hopefully this video will help you guys out if you get this keyboard. First of all, I couldn't figure out why the LED lights wouldn't turn on because it says on here if you hit function F12, the LEDs are supposed to turn on because it is a backlit keyboard. But what I found out is you actually have to turn the sit number six dip switch on to enable the function key because if the function key is not enabled, you can't do function key F12 and it doesn't work. So that was pretty confusing. And then the other thing is you have to unplug and replug the keyboard whenever you change the dip switches. Make sure you do that because I didn't and I was wondering why the function key wasn't working. As soon as I unplugged it and plugged it back in, the function key was working. So now, as you can see, if I hold down function key and I press F12, now I get a fully LED backlit keyboard. And now if I hold function, I hit F11, I can cycle through the different modes of brightness. All right, it looks like there's about six different levels of brightness and it only goes in the one direction. So you can't go back and forward. You just have to go forward. And uh, looking at the little thing here, it looks like function page up and page down is the volume control, next track, previous track, stop, play. You have all that stuff. You have a mute, you even have an eject. And if you want, you can actually enable Dvorak mode and Colmac mode, whatever those are. And that's pretty cool. But otherwise, I'm gonna leave everything the same. The OS key is enabled by default. And yes, I can confirm it does work. So I think at this point, we're good to go. We know, we know what we're dealing with here. We know how to light the thing up. We know how to plug it in. It types things when I hit buttons. Let's put her to the test. All right, well, everybody knows the true test of a keyboard is how it feels. And you guys know from my other typing videos, my other keyboard reviews, that I prefer typeracer.com. It's actually a really cool site. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They don't even know I exist. But out of all the typing sites I've tried, I actually really like this one because you compete with other people, and it's just a lot of fun. So here I've got your view down here of the keyboard. You're seeing this in real time. See, there's my hands. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that you guys can watch me type here. And this is my first time ever really typing uh, with MX Clear Keys. Cherry MX Clear Keys, they're, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, they're weird. I mean, they're, they've got a very, very like tense press. It's like, it's like almost like a mechanical typewriter. Not that hard though, not, not that hard, but that same kind of linear feeling. And they definitely feel unique compared to every other switch that I've tried. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and enter a typing race here. Just click uh, enter typing race. All right. It's me up against Abrato and Laura. All right, I got five seconds counting down, and then I start typing this paragraph. Let's do this. All right. I can already hear your tune calling me across the room when the world and his wife are on my back again. Not enough pleasure, too much pain. Oh, not plain, pain. When the world is too much with me, please leave. Just go away. Before I lose my mind completely, please leave. Just go now. In the side street, something's moving. Look around, look around. All around you, walls are tumbling down. Oh, ah! Tumbling down. Stop staring at the ground. Okay, so my first try was 103 words per minute, 95.9% um, accuracy. Not too bad for a first run. This is definitely gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but so far I like it. Uh, the thing I like the most about it is I find that uh, on the blue switches, I have a tendency to trip on the other keys more often. Most of the errors I made in this one were just misjudging the word and typing the wrong word entirely. But uh, I do like that it's it, it forces you to be more precise with your keystrokes. All right, let's do another one. Race again race again let's do this all right three two one all right <sighs> i'm so glad you came i'm so glad you remembered to see how we're ending our last dance together expectant too punctual but prettier than ever I really believe that this time it's forever. Ooh, only 94 that time. All right, race again. We got this. Ah. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Oops, jump the gun. Hundred and eighteen words per minute. Okay, that was a lot better. 
All right, so now we've had a chance to play with the WASD code keyboard here provided by MassDrop. And I have to say that the Cherry MX Clear switches are definitely the weirdest of the switches that I've tried. They have a very, very heavy keystroke to them. So if you like that in a keyboard and that's your thing, absolutely this is cool. The build quality on this thing is amazing. I love that it has a detachable cable. I wish more keyboards had that, to be honest. I like that it has the multiple channels so you can run the cable out here, 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 or on the sides. That's really cool. I like that they, they went aggressive with more rubber on the bottom so that it stays put on the desktop. The dip switch thing is absolutely cool. The fact that you can actually change it to Dvorak and just move all the keys around, or what was the other mode that it said that it did? I've never, I still don't know what it is. Colmac mode. What the hell is Colmac mode? Let me know down in the comments. Now, realistically, the only cons that I can give this keyboard really is that you have to retain this little piece of paper here. The dip switches down on the bottom, there's no labeling and there's nothing on the keyboard that tells you what the dip switches do. So you need this little piece of paper to figure it out. And the other con is, it does have a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how to use it out of the box. Now, if you watched my video, you're not gonna have that learning curve, but for me, it was a little bit of a learning curve because it tells you to turn on the LEDs that you have to hold the function key and hit F12. Of course, that wasn't working for me, but that's because first you have to enable the function key by flipping dip switch number six to the on position and then unplugging and plugging the keyboard back in. So once I figured that out, it was no problem after that. But if you're looking for a keyboard that has a solid build quality, this thing, it's heavy. It is beefcake. This thing ain't going to break ever. And it's also a very plain looking, you know, it's, it's a business keyboard. This is like, this is all about the business, none of the flash and all the business, but it is a backlit keyboard and the LEDs are actually incredibly bright. I've noticed that it's actually, I do prefer a backlit keyboard. Now I'm going to personally say that for me, the clear switches feel like they, they take a little bit too much pressure to depress for my liking, but that doesn't mean you're not going to like it. I would urge you to try it. It's definitely a unique experience. I should also mention that this keyboard comes in a 10 keyless version, which I'll have links to all the keyboards down in the description. Just check the video description and I'll have a link you guys can go over and look, but there is a 10 keyless version. And that is awesome because I wish I had a 10 keyless keyboard sitting on my desk right here half the time because I like to keep a trackball and mouse close by and I never use the 10 key. So this is all just wasted space. Oh yeah, and I like the key puller tool. That's actually pretty unique. Most of the keyboards I've got, the, the key puller is just this little plastic thing that you stick down there and whittle the key off. I, I like how this gets down underneath the key on both sides and supports it like really nice. It made it taking the keys off incredibly simple. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed my review of the WASD Code keyboard with Cherry MX Clear Switches. This is a badass keyboard all around regardless of what switch type you get for it. Uh, and it's definitely a solid keyboard. I've used a lot of mechanical keyboards and some are really flimsy, some aren't. This one is very, very, very rigid. Even though it's all made out of plastic up here on top and everything, it definitely has some weight to it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the review. Till next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.